Yo everybody, what's going on? This is Keegan from K-Man Reviews bringing you the next episode of Review Recall. This will cover as many albums as I could listen to that were released in February of this year. I'm not going to bother taking up any of you guys' time with some preamble. We got a lot to talk about, so let's dive in. Okay, this was such a fascinating record. Diverse, eclectic to no end. While I'm not the most knowledgeable on this band and the material on here is pretty fucking cool, I think it wavers in enjoyability a few times, particularly for the skits. However, I can absolutely see this record being a grower, and I hope it does, because this was an experience. Quick little EP here, barely 5 minutes long, and for what the 3 tracks deliver, it's solid, though I'm still not as crazy about Smoke Perp's sound as others I know, but I'm sure anyone who is will get a decent bit out of this. While I may not be the most familiar with Paranual, I'm leaving this record pretty impressed all things considered. Noisy, yet still remarkably atmospheric and emotive, all being tied together into an ethereal package. Really enjoyed this one. An all around good hip hop record, this sort of southern hip hop trap sound is a bit of a guilty pleasure for me, so I clicked with this sound a bit more than your usual trap album, but unfortunately doesn't leave the longest lasting impression out there. No hyperbole? One of the worst fucking things I've ever listened to. I'll admit, I got a bit tired on BK's take on Plug and Trap pretty quickly, and this is only a 20 minute long record. That being said, the instrumentals are solid, the features are excellent especially, but the fact that she can barely hold my attention for just 20 fucking minutes, not a reassuring sign for me at all. Just your typical pop R&B hybrid record with a sultry female vocalist behind the scene. Shane just didn't live up to the same caliber as her previous EP The West End had. This one was just boring by comparison. Vic Spencer delivers yet another great project. Man is consistent to a T and it's always great to listen to whatever he drops. As always, looking forward to the next one. I've always had a soft spot for Dirk Bentley's style of country. He seems like an artist who likes to pay homage and stay fairly traditional in his sound, and that MO is replicated fairly strongly on this newest album of his. If you're turned off of modern country but enjoy that classic country sound, I don't think I can recommend this enough. It's pretty good. One of Known As's better projects in my opinion, tighter flows, more gripping delivery especially, that was the biggest takeaway I got from it, and I think he just clicked with Lunar's fittingly spacey take on production. Not a bad little hip hop record here. Probably the most authentic Kelsey project I've heard up to this point, she's done a lot of more pop focused country, but this EP here feels more introspective and real as well. It does suck that it took Kelsey experiencing actual heartache to make that happen, but I'm happy the project turned out well. Yeah, Don Tolliver is just not for me, I'm convinced at this point. Haven't heard much from him that's ever truly clicked with me, with this new album included. Oh my god, a Boring. Even as a fan of the band, seven years for a boring ass comeback just hurts. You know, this is probably some of the most fun I've had with a Yeet record in full. Sure, it's a little bit longer and has a couple of filler tracks here and there, but this album has some of the clearest examples of why his sound is so appealing and also fairly distinct. If you've been on the fence with him, maybe give this one a try. It just may convince you. Why do I keep doing this to myself? I get why people love this record, I really do. It sounds nice, the instrumentals are luscious and sweet while Kalela's voice is delicate and all makes for a pleasant experience. That being said, I just don't connect with this sound as much as the rest of the internet seems to. That's not due to any real fault of the album, it just boils down to personal taste. Plus, I also think the length could have been shortened maybe 10-15 minutes, it does become a bit of a drag. But as it stands, I get it. I don't love it. Two track EP here, kinda in this ambient, chill wave sphere, all I gotta say is, the first track is excellent, the second track is like 15 minutes too long and doesn't make many waves at all. Very, very average cloud plug trap record here. Just the same stuff Tokyo's been doing for a few years at this point, though it seems like he's adapting with the times and hopping on whatever the latest hip hop trend is. Good for him for recognizing that. I just wish it made for more engaging music. For me, 
This album is a textbook example of a record that is consistently great its entire runtime, but never gets any higher than that. Latest record from this Canadian pop artist here, he hasn't disappointed yet and once again he refuses to with another banger collection of smooth R&B tinged pop songs. Maybe not the most cohesive like some of his other EPs have been, but there are plenty of hits here and I love it. Young Lean coming out with this singer-songwriter, pop-rock, glam-rock album was not something I could have been mentally prepared for, but I think this album had its moments, particularly in the instrumentals. They are very crisp and clean and help carry a lot of these tracks. On the other hand, Lean's vocals are annoying, to say the least, and they are the crux of my issues with this record. I could see them being a real deal-breaker for the more put-off crowd, but I still enjoyed this one enough as is. Absolutely stellar return from Paramore on their newest record here. Great writing, tight instrumentation in the vein of dance punk and post punk revival that really seems to be getting its due renaissance recently. Doesn't overstay its welcome. I'd say the six year wait was worth it. So Skrillex actually released two albums this February, the first of which was Quest for Fire, which I thought was pretty great. The beginning in particular was excellent, but unfortunately I do think it began to die down after the halfway point, but it is still the better of the two in my opinion. The second album, Don't Get Too Close, was much more consistent across the board, but pretty heavily filled with generic, radio-friendly trap songs. If you told me Skrillex had produced the album, I don't think I would have believed you. Thankfully, I still had a good time with this one, which is something that doesn't typically happen for pop trap records, but it was done comparatively well. All in all, not a bad month for Skrillex. Well, seems like Shania is far more content to travel down the homogenous route when it comes to modern country and just blend in with the crowd, making pop music with the faintest sprinkle of any country authenticity. I see why the album's hated and neglected by a lot of diehard fans. For me though, it's still pop, I can't fully hate it, but this is just a sad, kinda heartless record at the end of the day. Ooh, one of the most nothing alt metal albums I've ever heard. Diamond Dozen Instrumentals, Tiresome Grandiosity. I just got so little out of this. Not worth a listen. Logic with back-to-back -back banger records is always nice to see. Even if I'm not crazy about this as I was with Vinyl Days, I think the prolonged skits at the ends of some of these tracks kind of kill the momentum, and I also just feel like Vinyl Days managed to have more quality despite having more than twice this album's tracks. It's still great for sure, though a little step down. I love how sharp this record is compared to Corti's other releases that often felt more tranquil and easygoing. It makes sense for the title and really showcases a different side to the artist. However, I will always have a softer spot for that more serene brand of instrumentals like on Magical Forest, though this was still worth listening and is getting a recommendation from me. Oh jeez, this EP just felt like a massive throwaway. Production is half-assed and shoddy, beats are bland and generic, only thing really saving this is Babytron's decent voice and solid flows, but there's really no reason to listen to this. One of the broadest experimentations with genre I've heard so far this year. It's sunny, it's soaring, it's grand in its fusion of hip-hop, neo-psych, art-pop, and its ability to flow between genres so smoothly in its brief 10-track, 32-minute runtime is very impressive. Despite that, I don't quite think it's a standout record of the year, but it's definitely worth a listen. Without a doubt the best thing Rebecca Black has done. Excellent production all around, though I wish it stood out a little bit more from the hyperpop crowd. At least to me there are more exciting albums in the genre. But despite that, I'm happy Rebecca Black is back and actually making good music. This album shows a lot of promise. I'm looking forward to what's next. Yeah, it was nice. I don't really know Shame that well, so I don't think I'm qualified to make a serious assumption, but this did feel like more indie rock and artsy for a band that as far as I remember was considered post-punk, but I thought the sound was still pretty enjoyable. I'll come clean right now and I've been sleeping fairly heavy on Caroline. I haven't even heard her debut album Pang, so I decided to finally wake up and check this album out. And yeah, this is pretty damn great. It's got some bright hooks and some gorgeous vocals on the back half. Might not be an all-time favorite for me, however this album is a bright spot early in the year for sure. This is like some destructively ominous, haunting ambient stuff here. Doesn't even feel like music on occasion, it almost feels like the general atmosphere of like an abandoned factory of some kind. It's really gripping. If that piques your interest at all, maybe give this a listen. 
I absolutely get why people are not caring for this new Gorillaz album. I still managed to find a lot to like though. Of course, with this being a record heavily doused in synth pop, I was gonna enjoy the sound of it regardless, but in a sense, it kinda reminds me of the Now Now. Both records felt a bit one note in their general sound, but with decent bit of exploration and experimentation to keep the sound enjoyable, though the absolute waste of a Stevie Nicks feature on oil still irks me. Blank thought taking the role of dense, moody, atmospheric hip-hop producer over I Forgot's particularly Zoomer energy is kind of endearing, to be honest. Not a project I'm 100% sold by, but there's not much to complain about. Pink's just been kind of in a free fall lately, pun not intended. Her past two records have been both fine, but not up to the quality and sheer fun factor of her other material. Trustfall is easily the weakest record she's done in a long time, if not her worst. Just feels soulless and uninspired. Not worth your attention. Brief two-track EP from this American shoegaze post-metal band, and while the first track may not leave the most lasting impression, the second track Lullaby in all its 8 minute long splendor is excellent. Even with it being a b-side, it sounds fantastic. Really looking forward to the next Mildred release. The first EP from the core of this massive K-pop girl group is quite the interesting one, but I feel like it's more of so of a sign of possible potential than any definitive answer. It's got some bangers, got some smoother cuts, it has its moments, but I look forward to watching where this group is going to go in the coming years. Not as crazy about this one as I was their previous outing, and for the record, I was crazy about that previous In Flames record. As a result, this can't help but feel like a regression, but it was still a good time regardless. I uh, don't really have much on this one. I enjoyed it though, even if the cohesion of it was pretty scattered, though that could be excused due to it being a Lost Tracks compilation of sorts, but I had a solid time with it. Ugh. Early frontrunner for album of the year. This was so fun. Love the dance punk energy of it combined with a slight abrasiveness. Felt very clean and confident as well. Excellent debut record. How convenient of it to name a record after exactly what I'd give it out of 10. Shit writes itself, I tell you. Out of all the Stray Kids records I've heard, this one is the weakest. Only a handful of memorable tracks that save it from being bad, but the generic pop filler and awful flow of the record really weighed this one down for me. Alrighty folks, that is going to do it for this episode of Review Recall. Thank you all so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and be sure to follow all of my social media pages and come join the Discord server, links will all be in the description down below. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace!